हे फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑल अबाउट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न सम बेसिक्स ऑफ द डिजिटल काउंटर सो द काउंटर इज द डिजिटल सर्किट विच काउंट द नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स द स्पेसिफिक इवेंट हैज बीन अकर्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन सम प्लांट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेजर हाउ मेनी टाइम्स द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द सेंसर गोज बियॉन्ड द फिफ्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस देन विद द हेल्प ऑफ द काउंटर वी कैन मेजर दैट and since the counter is the digital circuit so the event which we want to count needs to be applied in the form of digital input so if the event which we want to register is not in the form of digital input then first of all with the help of the transducer and the other circuits it needs to be converted into the digital input so in case of the counter this events which we want to count are applied in the form of digital input pulses so this counter it takes the high to low or the low to high transition in the input pulses and based on that it registers the specific event so the input pulses to the counter can be a clock pulse or it can also originate from some external source and this pulses can arrive periodically or it may arrive at the random intervals but whenever these input pulses are applied then the counter registers them as the event and it will increment its current count so internally these counters are the interconnection of the flip flops so as the input pulses are applied to the counter then the output of the counter or to be precise the output of the each flip flop inside the counter changes in the specific sequence so this output of the counter may change in the binary sequence or it can also change in the any other sequence so if the output of the counter changes in the binary number sequence then it is known as the binary counter so if we have a n bit binary counter then it consists of n flip flops and starting from the zero this counter can count up to 2 to the power n minus 1 for example if we have a 4 bit binary counter then it will have a four flip flops inside the counter and it can count from 0 to 15 so if the count of the counter goes from 0000 to 1111 then that counter is known as the up counter but if it counts in the downward direction that is from 1111 to 0000 then such counter is known as the binary down counter so in the upcoming videos we will learn about it in the detail so as you can see over here the output of the counter is binary ones and zeros so to read this count we also need some decoding logic and with the help of this decoding logic we can read the output of the counter that means each counter also requires the decoding logic and with the help of the decoding logic we can know that when the counter has reached the specific count now when we are talking about the counters then we should also know what is known as the modulus of the counter so the modulus of the counter is the number of different output states of the counter through which the counter goes before returning to its first state so if we take the 4 bit binary counter then it will go from 0 to 15 or in the binary it will go from 0000 to 1111 and once it reaches the 1111 then once again it will go back to 0000 so in this case the total number of different output states of the counter is equal to 16 so we can say that the modulus of the 4 bit binary counter is equal to 16 or in other words it is the mod 16 counter now sometimes the counter does not utilize all the different possible output states and in such case the modulus of the counter can be less than the maximum possible value for example if we take the any 4 bit counter then the maximum possible value of the modulus is equal to 16 but if you see the bcd counter then it counts from 0000 to 1001 that means it has the total 10 different output states or in other words it is the mod 10 counter so although this bcd counter is the 4 bit counter but it is not utilizing all the possible output states so that is the brief overview about the modulus of the counter and in the upcoming videos of the counter we will discuss more about it so these counters are used in the many different applications so obviously they are used in the counting applications but apart from that they are also used as the timer as well as in the time measurement applications for example if we see this counter circuit then here the 1 megahertz clock signal 
is applied as an input to this counter. That means here the each clock duration is equal to 1 microsecond. So let's assume that at the output of the counter the decoding logic is also connected. So here the decoding logic is designed in a such a way that it generates the logic high when the output of the counter goes to the 100 count and at the same time it also resets the counter to the 0. That means with this counter we can generate the periodic pulses at every 100 microsecond. So in this way using the counter we can take the specific action at the predefined time. Apart from that using this counter if I want to measure the time duration between the two pulses then also we can measure that. So with the help of the flip flop or any other circuit we can generate this time pulse whose duration is the difference between the two rising gauges. Now this signal can be applied to the counter with the help of the AND gate. That means now when this input signal is high then during that time only the clock signal will be applied to the counter and during that time only the counter will increment its count. So let's say the frequency of the clock is equal to 1 megahertz and after this duration if the count of the counter is equal to 50 it means that the difference between the two time pulses is equal to 50 microsecond. So in this way the counter can also be used for measurement of the time delay. So similarly these counters are also very essential part of many analog to digital converters. For example they are integral part of the dual slope as well as the counter type ADCs. So these are the few applications of the counter. Now typically the counters can be categorized in the two types. That is asynchronous or the ripple counter and the second is the synchronous counter. So in the asynchronous counter all the flip flops in the counter does not receive the clock at the same time. So as shown below only one flip flop in the counter receives the clock and then the output of the one flip flop is connected to the clock input of the next flip flop and likewise this output of the second flip flop is connected to the input of the next clock. So in this way the output transition in the one flip flop triggers the next flip flop. So basically here the output transition in the flip flop acts as a clock signal for the next flip flop. So in this way the clock signal ripples through the each flip flop before it reaches the last flip flop and that is why these counters are known as the ripple counters. So these ripple counters are relatively easy to design but we cannot operate them at the very high speed. So that is the basic limitation of the ripple counters. Then the second type of the counter is the synchronous counter. So in the synchronous counter all the flip flops inside the counter receives the clock at the same time. That means in this type of counter all the flip flops responds to the rising or the falling gauge of the clock at the same time and therefore they are much faster compared to the ripple counters. So in the upcoming videos we will learn about these ripple counters as well as the different types of synchronous counters in the detail. But I hope in this video you got the basic overview of the detail counters. So if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.